Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ORCIDS webinar. We're going to give others a minute so they can join us and we'll get started soon. Okay. So now officially, welcome to the first episode of the ORCIDS webinar series. Today, we will be showing you how ORCID scales your 3D online and helps your end-to-end -end digital product creation process. Before we begin, I want to bring your attention to the bottom right of the screen. There are two tabs. The first one is the chat window, so feel free to say hello, tell us where you're tuning in from, and drop any comments throughout the presentation. The second tab is specific for questions, so drop your questions in there at any time. We will address those during our Q&A. To get a better experience, we ask you to go into full screen mode by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. This way, you'll see the ORCIDS platform up close and in better detail. That covers it, so let's begin. Let me introduce you to our speakers, Ben Sosinski, VP of Product, Brent Urbanski, Director of Production, and Jake Gordon, our Production Lead. Now I will pass it along to Ben, who will take you through our presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben. I am the head of product here at Embody. Um, I'm going to be taking us through a majority of the presentation today. Uh, the session today is pretty simple. Um, we're going to start with an overview of the platform. Um, like Isabel said, uh, this is the first of a series of webinars, so we'll kind of give the the high level um, uh, you know, description and review of the platform first, how ORCIDs will, can help your organization. And then we're gonna go into a bit of a role-playing demo. Um, I think role-playing works really well um, in demonstrating the platform. I know, you know there's many people in the audience that play different roles in their organization, of course. And I think it helps maybe provide some context of how particular roles um, at the organization can contribute to the platform and get the most out of it. And it's also kind of fun to be able to pass the baton and hear different vantage points and whatnot. So um, so that'll be pretty fun, I think. And then we'll do a QA, Q and A at the end. So um, let me let me begin with uh, uh, what is Orchids by Embody. So Orchids is an online SaaS platform for fashion specializing in 3D. And it allows users of any background to be able to easily log in and provide um, uh, 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 a significant role in the digital product creation workflow. Um, and in, 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 the, in the future, we might be referencing DPC, that stands for digital product creation, if you're un, unaware of that term. Um, um, what ORCIDs, ORCIDs is an extension to the 3D authoring tools that you're familiar with. So no matter um, you use, or, uh, um, sorry, Optitex, Browseware, Clo, um, uh, Maya, Blender, it doesn't matter, uh, but it is not a replacement for the 3D authoring tools. What Orcas does is it leverages the 3D models exported by the, uh, by the authoring tool and allows members from all over the organization to be able to visualize and actually provide colors and prints and materials um, to those to those models okay so um, so let me go on into how orchids actually can help uh, your organization and how you can do more with less so starting at the top we start with ease of use um, Orchids, first and foremost, is like I said, is, is web accessible. Anywhere, anybody from anywhere can log in. There's no software to install. It's all referenced through a browser. Um, it's mobile friendly. Um, and um, so anywhere, anybody can access it from anywhere in the world. It is very intuitive. We've stripped out a lot of the complexities around you know, 3D and it really truly provide the essentials to 3D design. And uh, because of that, there's just very little training involved um, to get up and running very quickly. Uh, number two is, uh, is product creation. Uh, we provide um, many tools that allow members to, to leverage 3D models and create beautiful product variants, product lines, and presentations all within the platform and all within live and interactive 3D. 
The third here is collaboration. It being a SaaS platform, of course, comp tools like commenting is you know uh, expected, uh, but also spaces and recipe files, which I'll get to in the in the demonstration, uh, play a role in keeping colleagues, uh, customers, and factories all in sync, and helps teams work better and faster together. Digital asset management, number four, uh, DAM, or ORCIDS is a DAM at heart. We actually call it a DAM plus, the plus kind of standing for 3D. Um, there are many uh, you know, DAM platforms and systems out there, uh, but there are very few, if any, that actually do a good job in, in visualizing 3D. You can store any file you want in those platforms, but to be able to actually see 3D, you need special software. ORCIDS allows you to do that. So users can upload and store and share any file type, both 2D and 3D, and with leveraging um, asset libraries to help organize particular assets, it makes uh, just uh, the collaboration um, just uh, work well. Uh, and then last but not least, publishing. So we have tools such as uh, embeddable 3D viewers, 3D downloads and file optimization and public links um, that give products a life outside of the platform. And in doing so, you can use these assets for things like promotion, uh, e-commerce, uh, uh, AR, VR, and, and metaverse uh, type of experiences. So um, these key values here all together just provide organizations with a lot of power in their DPC process. So here I wanted to explain some of the, these results that we're getting from customers and highlight one in particular. Um, these results come from a value customer of ours um, from a pilot they ran. The, the name of the company is Norilanka. They are headquartered in Sri Lanka with a design team in the UK supporting their, their UK customers. And in piloting ORCIDs, kind of kicking the tires on it, uh, seeing how it went, uh, they were able to to quickly um, uh, see a five times increase in productivity. So what does that mean actually? So the next number over, they were able to create 250 product variants, much like the ones that you're seeing over here on the right-hand side. Let's see if my mouse works, it does. Uh, so over here um, in two days and where the typical process would have taken them 10 days. That's where you get the five times increase in productivity. These, uh, the, the productivity is around creating assets for customer presentations to get approval for the styles that you see here. Okay, so why were they able to get this type of productivity productivity gain? Well, primarily, and this is very common with lots of customers uh, that we talk to, is that there's a bottleneck at the technical designer uh, level. The technical designer, not in all cases, but in many, many cases, is the one that truly knows the 3D authoring tool inside and out and may be the only person uh, that knows how to actually design, meaning creating the colorways or variants within the 3D authoring tool itself. They're typically referencing 2D designers. We call them 2D designers. They're primarily working in Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, and in this case, they, they were requiring the 2D designers to give them instructions or him instructions on recreating these designs created in Illustrator, typically using an outline of the front and back of a product, um, sometimes using outlines that are way out of date to the actual pattern pieces that were used that are used today, and um, providing those designs, you know, in email or whatever to the designer, the, the technical artist, and having him recreate these designs. And it takes forever. <laughs> and, uh, and so what happens with ORCIDs is that technical designer can focus on fit and drape, export those models out of the 3D authoring tool, upload them to ORCIDs, and then the 2D designers can have at it, and they can design very effectively and easily within ORCIDs to apply the, the colors, the prints, and the graphics on top of the models, and then create the assets needed for presentations all within the ORCIDs. Um, it takes just less than a day to, to, to learn ORCIDs inside and out. So there's not a whole lot of investment needed to learn the platform itself. And in this case, because they, um, they discovered that they could actually trust the renderings and the scale of the prints and graphics on the models, they were able to reduce their physical sample uh, requirements for a project like this by 400. And this was only in the first month of use of ORCIDs. So once they found these results, these results, 
they they signed up immediately and became you know full time customers. So we're very happy about that. So with that said, um, let's move maybe into the demonstration and role playing. So this is how it's going to be uh, work today. Uh, I'm going to play the role of a product manager. My responsibilities are um, I oversee the design department and I'm responsible for design reviews with the customers. OK, so my common tools I use on a day to day basis are email, chat and PowerPoint. Now, Jake. Um, who is here, is our 3D technical designer. He is the pattern maker for our, for our company. Um, he is the 3D expert. In this case, he'll be using Clo uh, for our demonstration today, but it can be any authoring tool under the sun. And um, he is the liaison between design and production. His common tools are the 2D and 3D authoring tools listed below. Then we have Brent Urbanski. He is representing our 2D designer. Um, he's responsible primarily for the variant and color way creation. He's responsible for generating the assets for design reviews. And um, his typical tools are, are Illustrator and Photoshop. So before we actually start playing the role, doing the role playing side, I'm actually going to just kind of give a high level walkthrough of the platform just to show you all the bits and pieces. And then we'll circle around and kind of you know, do a little project together. So here we go. I hope everyone can see. Um, so we are here in Orchids. Obviously, I'm within a browser. Um, I'm logged in. And I'm looking at what we call our just our product section of the platform. Um, what you are seeing here are uh, representations of, of 3D models that have been uploaded to the platform. Um, and to speak to the agnostic side of things here, this product could be Clo, this could be Browseware, this could be Maya or Blender if you do accessories or something like that. Um, and what what this um, a, a huge advantage to this is obviously the mixing and matching of, of models. You don't have to worry about where your models come from, but also you get uh, you get kind of a, a equal uh, renderings of these products. So the products look more or less the same to one another um, rather than getting drastically different renderings of these products. So the customer doesn't have to ask questions like, why does this product look so much different than this product? Well, typically it'd be rendered in a different platform. And in this case, we're all rendering within this, the same platform. So you get like um, um, you know, renderings of the products. So that's very important. Um, so here we have a product grid. Um, they can be categorized into different folders. We have we have tags and things like that to make searchability and filtering very easy. Um, you know, typical search for the products here on this page. Over in the top left corner, we have the different product lines. Okay, so product lines are containers or silos of models, assets such as prints, materials, and colors, and and people. OK, so our users over here. So what you can do now is create customer um, specific product lines and, and make sure that they are invited to a particular product line and they're not seeing models and, and work done in, in, in other parts of the, of, of the organization. So customer A doesn't trip upon customer B's uh, uh, products. So that's that's uh, super important as well. So uh, we're presenting, we're working on a presentation. I'll get back to this when we do role playing uh, to Acme Apparel. That's why we are within the Acme Apparel product line right now. All right. So let me click into a product. This is where it gets fun. All right. So what you're seeing right now is a model that was uploaded by Jake. Um, and what we typically request is that models are uploaded basically blank, you know, without any kind of colors or prints and graphics. Doesn't have to be the case, but that's what we recommend. Because um, once it's uploaded to the platform, you can then do the colorization all here within the platform itself. So we can click through here, decide the color for the front. I can navigate to other elements of the product over here using these steps. Um, that will do automated you know, rotations and things like that. So you see the right part of the product, um, but you can also just click on the product. So let's say I wanna click on the back here and then I wanna colorize the back, maybe a different color like so. Click here, you know, adjust the button, let's say, and then the front as well. 
And then um, this product, the designer came in and set up a few, a few graphics. So if I go to the front print, I can turn a print on and see that print and zoom in, see the texture kind of flow through that print itself. Um, I can change the color here very easily. I can come to the front graphic. I can turn the front graphic on as well. So let me zoom out here. You can see this graphic. This graphic was meant to be colorizable within the platform, so I can click it. And you can see the rendering here, how this, this graphic has some sheen to it. So these are 3D graphics. You can bring in just very simple PNGs or JPEGs, or if you're, you know, if you know 3D um, a little bit, you can bring in bump maps and things like that to give these, these graphics texture and specularity and things like that to provide sheen. And we provide very simple tools to adjust all of this. Um, in, uh, you know, here within ORCIDs. So here's just a little example of a design I've created. And um, over here on the left-hand side are our variants. So now that I've put together a little design, then I can save a variant here by just entering a name and that variant would appear in this list. And I can now, you know, maneuver it left and right and, and, and whatnot. It's here to, to, to organize the variants themselves for review. Other tools that exist here in the product, we have a snapshot tool. I can uh, create simple you know, snapshots from any angle um, right here within the platform. So you don't have to go hunting for your 3D expert to actually generate these for you. You can click here. You, we have renderings from 1K up to 4K, single product renderings. You can see I just click on this button. It quickly generates it. I can open it up here. And this is a transparent PNG that I can throw in presentation or, or email. So. Um, very simple. We also have the ability to just download turntables at these resolutions as well. It provides a zip file of all the different rotations within the product. Uh, we have a, a, a recipe. This is, I mentioned this earlier in the presentation. Re recipes here um, are PDFs that basically um, demonstrate or show the different uh, 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 configuration options, the design options that were chosen for this particular variant. Um, gives dimensions of the product. Um, we have you know, the, the different colors that were used, the different prints and their scale and whatnot. And this is used to help communicate these different options to the factory for, for production. Over here on the right, we have something called files. This goes back to the DAM capabilities that I was talking about earlier. You can associate any file type with this model. Um, it's just a little section over here that we can just upload any file that you want, whether it be uh, tech packs or inspirational imagery or you know any file that helps the communication or or provides detail on this product uh, can be stored here in the file section um, and then we have this export function over here on the right this is for downloading variant models um, this goes back to what I was discussing before being able to download optimized models for e-commerce um, AR and VR and whatnot and, and, and metaverse. Um, there are other companies out there that specialize in, in, in product or in 3D uh, optimization for these purposes. However, there is not one that I know of, and I'm pretty certain there isn't one, that, that actually has variant uh, capabilities within the platform as well as downloading optimized models. So here, instead of having to go back to the 3D authoring tool to, to create your different variants and then optimizing them somewhere else, you can do the variant creation here and the optimization here all within the same platform. Super, super powerful. Um, and last but not least here, we have share our ability to share. Okay, so here I can create a quick link to this product. We'll show this in detail a little later. Um, I can generate a link very easily. I can give it an expiration date so it doesn't live out there in the ether forever. I can copy this link and send it to anyone and you can open it even without an ORCID's login. Um, we also have embed capabilities. Uh, so this is our 3D embed tool, HTML code here. I can show variants along. With this, I can change the background color and then embed this into my website or other, you know, web experience um, and and show, you know, to to, to highlight the the, the 3D ness of this model. Um, and when an update happens within a product, it can then be updated um, in in real time and and produced uh, the the changes to the product can be viewed within that viewer at any time just at the click of a button by clicking this update button. So that's a quick uh, walkthrough of the product itself. Uh, oh, and one last thing is, of course, of commenting capabilities. The ability, 
you know, the, the ability to have a thread, multiple threads with comments that follow the product along um, here within the tool as well. All right. So um, that's a quick review of the product. So let me come over here to spaces. Oh, no, I'm going to go to library first. I apologize. So I'm going to leave this. I'm going to come over here to the library. All right, so the library is segmented to, to four different asset types. We have colors, materials, prints, and graphics, OK? Like I said before, these are all um, associated with the product line that I'm in. So Acme Apparel, this is the Acme Apparel uh, uh, list of colors. Uh, colors can be uh, created easily just by typing in a name and a color code and selecting you, you know, your hex or CMYK uh, value here, need be. Um, or they can be imported uh, via an ASE file. So um, uh, these can be created, obviously, in Illustrator or Photoshop and just brought, you know, a bunch of colors can be brought in at once. Over here on the right, which is the same throughout uh, the different categories here, is the ability to create different sets or palettes of these colors. Uh, so in this case, we have, you know, our neons, we have our dark, they can be, you know, uh, uh, organized. And we have our spring colors down here below. Okay, so this is 2023 20, spring colors. Okay, so these are the ones that we're, you know, typically using on many of the products um, that we have for this particular season. Um, and, and the purpose of these is to be able to do rapid uh, deployment of these colors on any product within that product line. So if I move through, I'll go through these quickly. We have materials. So these are 3D materials. They can be imported um, from anywhere. You can bring in your own. We also have uh, many materials that we provide for you yourself that you can use on any product. Um, um, and again, the, the ability to create the different palettes or sets. Uh, we have prints. These are repeatable graphics. These are all over prints that can be you know, put on different parts of the product. Um, they're stored here. We have searchability. We have the ability to, you know, see different um, you know, uh, details, the author and whatnot in our list view. Um, the ability to create sets or palettes and graphics. These are these are single graphics that can be placed, you know, on on any product within that product line as well. Again, these are 3D graphics. They can be as simple as the PNG or JPEG, or they can have different maps that give um, more depth and 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 texture and effects to these particular graphics as well. Um, so last but not least, that, that kind of summarizes our library. Last but not least is spaces. So over here in the top, um, what, what spaces are, are an infinite uh, whiteboard, much like Miro. If you use something like Miro, a tool like it, um, infinitely scalable. Um, and the purpose here is kind of a free form means of creating presentations, meaning uh, whether they be, you know, maybe customer presentations or even internal uh, reviews. They are also the gateway uh, to our DAM. So we have, you know, you can actually upload many different types of files to these, including maybe not some that are maybe not so visual, maybe DXF files, Word docs, things like that. But the more visual files can all be associated together. Maybe these are uh, tech packs or inspirations or swatches or whatever. You know, the world is your oyster here and you can, they're very flexible uh, for the purpose at hand. Um, but, but what's most, maybe most important is their association well, with the 3D models themselves. So, if you click on a model, for instance, I can go to this products variant that was included here. All right, and I can make a simple change. Let's say I just want to change the front to, I don't know, a maroon or something like that. I can do that. And then let's do maybe a little better color there. Um, and then I can just save over this variant, give it a second to kind of do its thing. And then I can go right back to my space. And that variant here was updated just like that. So you can imagine here having a use case where you have many different variants, maybe different angles of the same variant, and you make, want to make a simple change in the product. You can do that in anywhere where this variant is used in spaces will be updated immediately. So it keeps your, your assets in sync uh, across many different products. We also have just simple tools like text, commenting. You can download this as a as a PNG, using the presentation, uh, whatever you like, change the background color, and so on. Uh, we have a, a we have an arrow tool for for uh, doing quick um, annotations and things like that. That's coming here in a few days, um, and these are also shareable. So I can just click this button here and make them shareable to the outside world and make them very easily, uh, you know, using a link 
be able to put it into an email or, or whatnot um, and to give access to this space to somebody outside of the organization. Okay, well, that kind of sums up the, 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 the high level demo here. So let me, let me go into um, this role playing uh, thing that I was talking about before and kind of set it up. So the scenario that we made up for this demo, but probably a very common one, uh, we're going to be using this space. So the idea is, hey, we have a presentation, a line presentation tomorrow with Acme Apparel and uh, we're under the gun and they gave us a request today to add a polo shirt to the line all right so we're scrambling right so we need multiple people involved i need to get my uh my 3d artist my my technical designer on it to be able to produce this model and get it and export it uh, and upload it up into the platform so then brent can use it to create the different variants here and what we want to do is populate this this blank square here with the variants for this polo uh prior to tomorrow's meeting okay so um i've i've asked jake to step in and 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 provide this model and he's doing so and i'm going to pass the baton over to him so let me stop sharing Turn me off and Jake, it is now your turn. Hey, great. Thanks, Ben. Uh, let me get this share going here. Great. Um, so hello, everybody. I'm Jake Gordon. I'm a 3D technical artist here at Embody. And, uh, you know, just to stay in my lane here, I'm going to uh, stay in my comfort zone and, and play the uh, 3D artist uh, in our little role play here. So as a uh, technical artist, I first need to digitize a product within a 3D authoring application. And I can use any of my preferred 3D applications, whether it's vStitch or Clo, uh, Optitex, or even a 3D modeling or CAD application. Uh, and they all upload into Orchids with ease, as, as Ben's already mentioned. Uh, here I have a, a polo shirt that I've created in Clo 3D uh, that I'll be using today to bring into Orchids and allowing my 2D artist, Brent, uh, the ability to quickly make multiple uh, variant options. So in Clo 3D, I've simulated this drape and created the desired fit. And I've assigned this polo with a uh, cotton fabric, which I've applied with a white color to create this blank silhouette. Uh, this means that colorways don't need to be created here in Clo by the 3D artist, but can be handed over to the 2D artist uh, to apply colors, materials, prints, graphics, um, and all from our uploadable libraries within Clo or within Orchids. Uh, I've also assigned some stitching to the hem areas on the polo, which I've set to texture type uh, or type texture, excuse me, uh, and I've applied with white as well. So now this product's ready to be exported from Clo and uploaded into Orchids. I'll select my pattern pieces here. Um, <clears throat> and I'll uh, file export, OBJ selected. Uh, Orchids also supports FBX and GLTF uh, 3D formats. So I'll give it a name here. Uh, it's called Polo Demo. And select save. Okay, so my export window uh, allows me to set my different settings here. And in our user, our Orchids user guide, you can find uh, detailed instructions for um, for multiple uh, softwares. So I'll hit OK and export this to a zip folder. I'll just switch over to the web here. Uh, now I can add this product to my my product line here in Orchids. Hit the uh, add product button, upload a product. I can upload multiple products if I had more than one. And I'll just give this product a name, uh, Polo Demo. And a product code, we'll just call it PD. Okay. And I can give this product a description if I want to. I don't have to do that right now. So I'll go ahead and add that. Okay, and now, now this new product shell is created. And here I can store my files pertaining to the product, add product descriptions and tags. Um, and I can also upload my, my 3D. So I can browse to the location where I've saved my zip folder, or I can just click the folder that it's in and, and drag and drop my, 
my zip folder directly into the window, which I'll do. Now I can see uh, the files are being extracted from the folder uh, and are now ready to upload. There we go. So I can select the upload button. And here I can kind of see the progress as the, the geometry and the textures are, are uploaded and optimized. Um, and this lossless optimization just enhances the files to be better used within the web. And here we can kind of see just how quickly this upload process typically happens. There we go. So now uh, this upload is complete. I can select the correct authoring platform this came from. This one was from Clo 3D. So I'll select Clo, but you can see there's a list here of, of other softwares that are supported. And select Done. Okay, and now my product shows here in the viewer where I can navigate around it in 3D. Uh, from this point, I can set up this product with colors, materials, graphic uh, options. Uh, I can component to uh, set up the componentization of the product, uh, scene lighting and camera views can be established. Uh, and then my 2D artist can begin creating the different product variants. Now my product is available on my product grid wall and it's accessible to anybody who's been giving, given permissions to it. Uh, and since ORCIDS is a web-based platform, I can now hand this off to any, uh, any of my 2D designers located anywhere across the globe. So now I'll go ahead and I'm going to hand this over to Brent to begin creating the uh, the different design variants. It's all yours, Ben or Brent. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Uh, so I am Brent Urbanski. I am acting as the 2D artist today. Um, and we've got an urgent need to to get all of these variants created for acme apparel like ben was mentioning um, so here i am in a product uh, that jake just uploaded for me uh, this is actually one that was set up earlier so i could pre-populate all of these variants also known as colorways down here on the bottom left uh, so you didn't have to sit through that right now um, but let me show you how quickly and easily it is to set up more variants. So in this product window, like uh, Jake was showing, we've got this uh, blank silhouette here. Um, all I need to do is click on a part and give it a color. So let's start colorizing the body here. So I'm gonna add Peterson blue to the main body. I'll click on the pocket, make the pocket Peterson blue as well. You know what, I'm actually gonna colorize the collar as well with a nice white trim, white interior. Um, so I could add that as a new colorway right now. I've got a bunch of, of solid colors in here and a couple uh, uh, with prints and graphics, but you know what, let's, let's continue on and I'll show you how I can easily add prints to this product. So hopping over to my components tab, this is where we have materials, prints, graphics, and colors. All I need to do is click on this part again Go over to my print set and you'll see i already have one print applied here this earlier today let me apply another one for you i'll go to my library that ben was mentioning um, let's go down let's pick a let's pick a paisley print we've got to look nice okay first i need to place the print where i'd like um, this is a randomized graphics so it isn't really critical that i get the placement just right uh, on first pass for this comp so i'm going to apply this placement uh, i'm actually going to scale it down so it looks quite large now this is much easier for me to to do this work here than an illustrator um, for two reasons one like you saw i can scale very quickly um, and two i get to actually see how it looks on the 3d model not some line art that is uh, not to scale or size. So this is excellent for me to work in here. Uh, so I do like that size there. Um, however, I would like to make it colorizable or add a, diff add a different color. So I'm gonna turn on the colorizable toggle and go to my spring 2023 uh, color library palette. I'm gonna select all those colors and bring them down. Now I can look 
all the different options here. You know, I'm actually going to go with water. So we've got sort of this blue on blue scheme going here. I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see the detail, the level of detail in the graphic itself. So this is an applied graphic on top of this material, and you can see some of the, the base material showing through. Um, and that looks good. But if I scroll down to this print application slider here, you'll, I'll show you what we can do. I can make this thicker, and it'll look more like a screen print. Or actually, I could take it all the way down to very thin, and it's going to show all of the base material coming through, which will give the effect of, of um, a sublimation or other type of, of um, impregnated print. So, OK, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Let's add a graphic to the uh, pocket as well. So I'll click on this pocket. And we'll go to my graphics set here. And you'll see I already set up a graphic earlier today. Um, this one is a dimensional graphic. Uh, it looks like a, a embroidery here with uh, 3D effect going on for dimension and stitch and shading. So it gives us a nice 3D appearance, which we also couldn't do in Illustrator. Uh, but let me add a new one. I'm going to create a screen print type graphic. I'll go to my library. Yeah, uh, I'm going to select the Orchids logo here. And just like prints, I first need to, to pick the placement. So I'm going to move this graphic around the pocket. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. So I can work in this 3D view, which we're seeing here, or I can work in the 2D view on the left um, to be a little bit more precise with measurements. And you know what? Actually, I prefer to do that because I want to relay this, this measurement information to the factory eventually. So I'm going to switch over to 2D view as my primary view. And now you'll see I have these guides. I'm actually going to move these guides so I can measure from the left hand side of this pocket. And let's go, let's go to the top edge of this pocket. So now when I move this graphic around, you'll see these arrows on the left hand side and the top edge, which show us the exact placement down to the centimeter. So I'm going to place the graphic right about here, which looks great. Um, another great feature of ORCIDS is I can relay this information to the factory with this button up here. It looks like a camera. This is actually a placement spec doc. Um, if I push that, it's going to download this placement spec doc to my desktop. I'm going to open it really quick so you can see how this works. Um, there you go. We've got this uh, PNG, which shows exact measurements in the image itself. Oops, actually, sorry about that. I left. There we go, full screen, I uh, took over. Uh, so I'm going to apply the placement. And I think that looks pretty good. But you know what? I want to make this colorizable as well. So I'm going to click the colorization option here. I'm going to copy my Spring 2023 palette like I did with the print. You know what? I'm going to continue this color story as well. I'm going to go with water to match the, uh, the print that we applied. And like I said, I want to make this a screen print. It looks like a screen print. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to make sure that this graphic application slider is set to thick, which will, which will uh, eliminate the, the base material sh showing through. So it looks more like an, a, a graphic applied as a screen print over the top. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. Um, so now all I need to do next is go back over to my Create tab, hit the plus button. I'm going to add a new variant. Let's call this one Orchids. Uh, let's call this Blue Orchids, actually. Hit Create. This is creating a new variant for us, which appeared at the bottom here. This is our new variant. And you can see how quickly and easily that was for me to create a new, a new variant while I even applied prints and graphics here. But if you had the prints and graphics already in here, 
I mean, you can you can spit out these these variants within minutes of each other. So, all right. So I need to alert Ben that that this is ready for um, for use in his line plan. So I'm going to turn comments on. I'm going to leave a comment for Ben here saying, that's Ben ready for you. This will get, send uh, Ben an alert via email that it's his turn to uh, download these variants, or sorry, apply these variants to the space and send the space off to the customer. All right, I am going to be handing this back over to Ben now. All right, thanks, Brent. So um, let me get back to my screen here. Give me one second. Okie doke. All right, so I received an email, but I also received a little notification up here in, a little in red. Um, it said that Brent Urbanski um, mentioned me in my polo shirt, so I can go directly to this product, give it a quick review, um, look, check out all my variants. Let it load here for a sec. All right, ready for review. I can just quickly, you know, give them a comment back. Thank you very much. Look at my different variants. You know, provide my own comments back to him if I needed to. Then he would be alerted and come back in and make any changes. But let's say ben, we're... you are not sharing. Oh man, I thought I was. Oh, I'm not. Sorry, guys. Um, let me just back up real quick. I was I went to my um, uh, notification center up here and clicked on this, was taken to the product and was able to comment uh, within the comment. Um, I'm here reviewing my uh, variants that were created by Brent. Let's just say that everything looks good. Everything looks good to me. So I'm going to come here back to my space. I'm going to add these variants very quickly to this presentation. So I'm going to do that here. My edit, I'm going to go here in product variant. I'm going to go to my polo shirt. And here are all those variants that Brent set up for me, including the newest one that you set up right here. All right. And what I can do is I can just select all of these variants and just import them all at once by hitting the select button. Here they are. And I'm actually just going to come here. I'm going to scale them down so they match my others. Do that just like this, get it sized correctly, like so. And here we go. And there we go. So they're all available. If you zoom in tight, you can see just the prints and the colors. You can get very close to these and get quite a bit of detail uh, within spaces. I'm just going to save and continue. And then I'm going to create a quick link to send to my customer. So I'm getting prepped for our uh, conversation tomorrow. I want to send these out ahead of time. So um, this space is shareable. I just click on this um, and I'm going to generate a link. Um, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to do it once more because I've wanted to set its expiration to three days. Maybe we want this to evaporate after three days so it's not sitting out in the ether forever. Uh, we generate a link here. Um, I can test it and do it myself if I'd like to before doing so, but I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to paste it into our chat window. I'm not going to send it quite yet. I'm gonna wait for one second. Um, I will also, for our presentation, I actually wanted to uh, uh, send a link to the entire line, the 3D models that make up the entire line. So to do that, I can click on the share toggle here. It exposes all the shared models that we have in our um, Acme apparel product line. And I'm going to go here, basically the same thing. I'm going to give this a little name here for, you know, Friday's demo. I'm going to generate the link with the same three-day expiration. And then I'm going to copy this link. And I'm going to put this link also in our chat window. And now you all should have these links and you can kind of view what these look like yourselves here. So and we are done we are done without a lot of back and forth <laughs> we we are done um with the presentation tool happening you know within orchids sharing the link out getting the customer prepped for our conversation tomorrow feel real good about it so that is basically the demo and uh and uh so that was fun
So next step in our uh, presentation here is a, a, is a quick Q&A. I saw that a few questions. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. I might have to reshare stable screen sharing so I can go through these questions. I see a few here. All right. Thank you, Ben, Jake, Brent, for an amazing presentation. Um, let's start with one of the questions we have here. Mm -hmm. Will you have a Spanish version for Latin America available? We will very soon. So we're shooting for the middle to the later half of next month. And we should have uh, translations for Latin, Chinese, and several other European languages out there as well coming out at that time. So that's a great question. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Next question is, does ORCIDs have a communication skill to make development easier with manufacturers? So. Um, I, I think we covered this. I think this question might have been asked early in the presentation before we showed that recipe file that had the listing of all the different uh, configuration or the, 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 the design options that were chosen for a particular variant. So that's one method. The other method was what Brent showed off um, the, the kind of the spec sheet of the, uh, the measurement chart, chart, not the right word, but the measurement uh, spec of the graphic that was placed on that pocket. And those two things together can relay a lot of info information, including the visuals of, of how those options are set up and be able to communicate those to the factory. Okay, our next question is, how did you create ID mask for recolor? I'm not 100% sure what this question is. I think what's happening is, I think the mask that you're talking about is how do you get it to have you know, to be transparent to, so you can see the underlying material and make it colorizable on top of that particular graphic. So there's, so basically in that example, it was a simple um, transparent PNG that was colored white when you brought it in. So very rapidly you can say, okay, I want to just colorize this entire graphic, you know, a particular color or a set of colors that was, you know, brought in from our library. So it's super simple just to place a, a, a standard PNG on top. Another method that we have, if you import an SVG, that has separate um, colors within it, then you can use orchids to take each of those, um, you know, groups of, of, of colors and make those colorizable within the platform as well. So that's the use case of having a multicolored graphic within the platform that, that has controls for colorization throughout the entire graphic. Awesome. Are you able to do any 3D fitting on this platform, for example, to show stress maps on the garment? So usually that um, that request actually comes from the 3D authoring tool. So fitting and things like that is a geometric um, uh, process that the 3D authoring tools are experts in. So the so the, um, the, the, the stress map and things like that can be generated in the 3D authoring tool and then brought into ORCIDs. The nice part is, is just take screenshots from the authoring tool, create a space, have your different um, variants there in your space, and then you know basically copy screenshots and lie them into the space as well, so you can see everything together uh, when you're when you're done creating your variants within ORCIDs. Great. Well, that's Our a wonderful. That's question. an awesome question, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, can I also ask? If you are able to import avatars along with the garment, they could be exported as one OBJ? Yes. The answer is yes. So if what, what you see is what you get in the 3D authoring tool. So what, if you have a, a garment draped on an avatar, you can export those both as one single model and bring it in. And what's neat about it is that in ORCIDs, um, you can actually turn on and off the avatar. So even if maybe in some certain circumstances you want to see the avatar, along with the garment and others you don't, you can simply just have a toggle that turns it on and off to, um, to produce your different renderings for the purpose at hand. Awesome. For our next question, are you able to view the garment on an avatar body as well as off the body? And can the avatar be customized for the brand? Example, can the fit be reviewed as well as the aesthetics on the ORCIDs platform? Let me try to get to the bottom of this question. Hold on, let me read it one more time. I see it here. So I just answered the, are you able to view the garment? Can it be customized for the brand? Well, of course it can, but not within the ORCIDs. Typically that happens, you know, outside of ORCIDs within the 3D authoring tool as well. 
Um, so that's primarily more of a 3D authoring tool type of um, request there. Awesome. Um, and for our next question, can you export the OBJ you have created in ORCIDs if you wanted to work back into it in clo 3D, for example, after you created new variants? So that's typically that's not the, the workflow that happens. You can export the model as a GLTF file today uh, within ORCIDs for purposes outside of the platform, but re-exporting it back in is typically not the, re the workflow we, we suggest. Um, um, typically that work is done within, you know, the project files within the authoring tool. If you have geometric changes that need to be made, we recommend that you make those within the 3D authoring tool and import them back into a product. And what we do is we keep all of the design option changes that you've made for that particular product and just swap the model out. So it's just, you'll get the updated, um, you'll get the updated uh, uh, fit and, and uh, the, the updated model within ORCIDs, but you'll keep all your other design options in ORCIDs. Awesome. And for our last question, do you support or ORM maps? So, you know what? I just read that and I don't know what an ORM is. So let us get back to you on that. I should, I hope, I think I should, but I don't. Does anybody else, Jake or Brent, know what that is? I'm not hearing anything. Um, I believe it's like a blending of multiple maps. Um, we don't support that currently, um, but maybe something our developers can take a look into. Yeah, we could maybe do that, but um, we have our own blending within ORCIDs. So we've spent a lot of time um, in shader development. Uh, you know, Brent was showing you an example of it where you see a, a, a graphic that, that you can actually show the thickness over the paint. We do that with transparency. We do that with, with other maps as well, where we're layering materials, prints, and graphics on one another and being able to blend all of those together. So we handle a lot of the blending in ORCIDs. Awesome. So that is it for today. Let me just... And occlusion, I see the last one from the same, uh, Elena. Oh. Uh, occlusion, roughness, metallic map. Jake, can you answer that one for me? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, we do support that uh, in our PBR shader. Uh, roughness and metallic maps um, are available uh, to use, and, and we can switch our, our from our standard shader to our PBR shader and use those maps as well. Cool. And they'll transfer if those are set up within the authoring tool, Clo or VSitcher, they will transfer directly into Orchids. Uh, mm -hmm. with those maps if they're exported in the correct format, which would be GLTF, which supports those maps. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Noel? Awesome. All right. Um, well, thank you, everyone, for today, um, for joining us. Let me just share my screen real quick to show you something cool. Okay. Here. Okay, now you're done. Please um, remember to scan this QR code. That way you can learn more about us and our pricing plans and um, sign up for your 15 day trial. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. That was great. great day. Much appreciated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thanks, guys.